uh, in the last tutorial uh, we talked about um, how to invoke uh, a JPF uh, from terminal um, or command line uh, but uh, JPF is essentially a verification system so um, most of our testing is driven by JUnit uh, in a Java application to be specific uh, so what's the point uh, of running in an ad hoc basis from terminal or running it through the IDE uh, it makes more sense to automate it uh, using JUnit itself and uh, JPF comes with a uh, very good integration uh, with JUnit and uh, let's in this tutorial let's try to uh, uh, discuss uh, how you can uh, run JPF uh, using uh, JUnit uh, but uh, care should be taken uh, not to use uh, JUnit as a uh, test case uh, running system because that's not what it is uh, designed for uh, though it because it runs in a JVM itself uh, it can let you do that but uh, you shouldn't be doing it um, so here uh, to keep it uh, comparable um, I'm using the same uh, racer.java I've created uh, a Java application here um, uh, in NetBeans uh, say custom JPF JUnit and I just copy pasted uh, the racer.java from uh, uh, the example that examples that come with uh, JPF core and uh, let's try to uh, verify the same uh, racer uh, Java use invoking JPF uh, through uh, JUnit okay so I've written a JUnit test case here um, the only thing that uh, you need to know is uh, uh, it and JPF uh, in itself they have used uh, JUnit for their uh, testing purposes and they kind of provide uh, the test suite whatever they're using for themselves uh, for us to use it so here I've imported uh, the test JPF uh, which is the test suite uh, which JPF uses for its testing and uh, the racer test extends uh, test JPF uh, so here I have uh, test main uh, say this is the main method that was invoked uh, last time during the command line so let's invoke the same method and uh, here uh, the test main actually is going to test uh, uh, the main method uh, in the racer.java uh, so this is essentially doing all the magic here uh, the verify no property violation uh, and then uh, here we are passing uh, the same command line arguments last time we kind of uh, gave the .jpf file uh, to uh, run jpf and uh, all these properties were taken from the .jpf file so here I'm trying to provide that uh, using the key value store like this is how jpf uh, like if you had to give all these as Java arguments instead of arguments to the run jpf.jar this is how you would do it um, so I'm like if you look at it here uh, it was using listener uh, precise race detector and uh, that's the same thing I've given here listener equals to dot listener precise race, race detector and uh, the plus I mean uh, every uh, key here is prefixed with the plus that's how jpf works and uh, the other thing important thing to notice here is the plus class path um, you have to look into the architecture uh, to better understand this particular thing um, uh, the JPF uh, it actually takes the dot class files that are generated from your uh, source files so essentially compiling your application is necessary if you have to run uh, your files through JPF so here in the class path, I have given the build slash classes where uh, the racer dot uh, Java is compiled into racer dot class file, and uh, here the build slash test slash case classes. That's where the racer the class file of the racer test will be available. Mm, so essentially, I've given those two things. I mean, I've already spoke 
uh, that uh, you need to if there is multiple values you need to separate them by comma and uh, so this and what happens is uh, when this particular uh, method is invoked uh, through JUnit, uh, it first checks, uh, uh, I mean, uh, it first tries to invoke it through JUnit. And eventually, uh, because you're extending this particular class, it is getting in, uh, this is actually run in the, J, in the VM of uh, Java Pathfinder and not uh, JVM, that is Java's VM. Uh, so, uh, there are multiple other kind of uh, methods uh, to get a detailed description of them. You might have to look into here. It has very nice tutorial about how to go about things. Uh, you can even verify for deadlock, but I'm trying in this, I'm trying to verify for any of the property violations. So, if there's any error, then JPF is going to say, uh, there, uh, JPF is going to create an assertion error. And then it's gonna uh, it's gonna make your test case fail. Uh, if you look at it here, we have not really used any of the assert equals or assert false, so on and so forth, which is JUnit. Um, so here, uh, JPF will be invoked, and it will automatically throw the assertion error, and that way it will be propagated here, and this test case will fail. And what what is it gonna run? Uh, the racer.main, I'm invoking it with null is as good as uh, calling racer public static void main with no arguments uh, from your command line. Uh, so uh, let's run this JUnit test case, um, but make sure your uh, code is compiled because otherwise JPF uh, is not going to work. Uh, so like preferably do a clean and build, uh, say uh, and uh, in NetBeans especially, only if I click text, text test, uh, the class files of the test package will be compiled. Uh, and then, uh, so that's, uh, okay, let me clean it. Mm. So it's cleaned and uh, I'm gonna test. So it's gonna compile my eraser test.java and uh, it's gonna be invoked through JPF uh, and JPF is gonna throw the assertion error. So, all right, so it pretty much happened as expected. So if you look at it, this particular test case failed. JP found unexpected errors. So here, if you look at it, uh, JP would have actually thrown an assertion failed error. So, and uh, if you also look into the terminal, uh, it pretty much ran the same thing. And then uh, it said uh, there is a race deducted. Uh, and that way it failed. Uh, so um, the one thing you need to be cautious about is uh, in this tutorial uh, that is given in JPF uh, website itself, uh, they have given this particular example where they're using import JPF test suit. Um, I checked in the source code and there's nothing called the JPF test suit exists. Uh, they're pretty much using the test uh, JPF from uh, the util.test directly. So this is going to create a, a compile time warning if you're um, uh, trying to copy paste this code. Mm. So uh, just remove this line and it's going to work. Mm. And uh, uh, the other, uh, this is a pretty good tutorial about how JPF test works. Um, and uh, this uh, other beautiful thing here is uh, uh, their uh, verify API uh, where if you're trying to run your system say with uh, a range of arguments like uh, you're trying to uh, change the values of an integer between a range and then try to invoke JPF on and on again any for any data between this range then you can use uh, the verify.get int and the min max and similarly you can use a set of values um, so these are pretty interesting thing to look things to look about and the other thing is uh, you can also give that the red jpf config uh, about your class and then give whatever uh, the information we have given here uh, to the red uh, jpf config which might be more elegant to your code and uh, so essentially what happens is when JPF is invoked, uh, these uh, two arguments are as good as uh, passed on as a command line argument and eventually get set to the config.java and uh, JPF is finally invoked. 
Um, so that's pretty much about uh, how to um, run JPF, uh, totally automating it through your JUnit test cases. Um, thanks for listening.